On April 2, 1917, President Woodrow Wilson appeared before Congress to ask for a declaration of war against Germany due to that country's resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare and its attempts to form an alliance with Japan and Mexico. Four days later, on April 6, America went to war. The following month, General John J. Pershing was selected to command the American Expeditionary Forces going to Europe. Over the next 18 months, he would transform the ill-prepared American military into a disciplined fighting force. However, at the start of the war, America had a standing army of only about 200,000 men and that included National Guard members. The size of the military had to be increased dramatically and relying on volunteers alone would not be enough. Consequently, Congress passed the Selective Service Act in May which required all men between the ages of 21 and 30 to register for military service. Over two and a half million men would be drafted. Also in May, Britain and the United States implemented a sophisticated convoy system to protect merchant ships and troop carriers. This tactic enabled the movement of large numbers of American soldiers to Europe with very few casualties. In June, General Pershing arrived in Paris to coordinate activities with the British and French allies. At times, his relations with the Allied generals would be difficult due to his insistence on an independent American fighting force. Also in June, over 14,000 American soldiers arrived in France. By December, more than 180,000 troops would be on duty. Ultimately, over 2 million American soldiers would serve in France and Italy. In the fall of 1917, American soldiers would take part in their first combat operations. Initially, they supported the Allies in defensive assignments, but later, as more troops arrived, they would take on more aggressive roles as highlighted in the following engagements that took place in 1918. In May, U.S. forces conducted their first offensive action at the Battle of Contigny. Although a relatively small engagement, the American victory convinced the Allies that the U.S. military was an effective fighting force. In September, they successfully fought in the Battle of St. Miliel, where more than a half a million American troops attacked a German position that was 30 miles wide. From late September to early November, they took part in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, which was their largest battle of the war. Over a million American troops successfully fought in terrain that the German army had spent four years fortifying. The United States would suffer over 110,000 casualties in this offensive. Overall, the American Expeditionary Forces fought in at least 16 engagements of varying degrees of intensity. Here's a quick overview of those actions. All of these engagements occurred in 1918, other than the 1917 Battle of Cambrai, and all were fought in France except Vittorio Veneto, which occurred in Italy. Out of these battles and operations would come stirring stories of how the U.S. Marines displayed a ferocious tenacity at the Battle of Bella Wood, of how the African-American infantry unit, nicknamed the Harlem Hellfighters by the Germans, would see more combat than any other American unit, of how the heroic Lost Battalion survived a harrowing five days and nights surrounded by Germans in the Argonne Forest, and of how the humble Sergeant Alvin York, a pacifist, would become America's greatest war hero due to the actions he and his men undertook during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. The war ended at 11 a.m. November 11, 1918. The last soldier killed was an American who died one minute before the armistice started. The contribution of the American Expeditionary Forces was twofold. Besides providing the Allies with two million fresh troops to hasten the defeat of Germany, its presence also raised the morale of Allied soldiers and civilians, as well as demoralizing the German military and populace. As General Pershing so well stated, the deeds of the American Expeditionary Forces will live forever on the most glorious pages of American history.